everyone, welcome to this edition of Finding a Better Way. Today I'll be talking about finding a better way to reflect on your experiences during undergrad. So many of you who follow me know me, y'all are my friends, my friends watch my channel, and <laughs> y'all know that I went to Duke for undergrad. Um, and so for those who don't know, I went to Duke University in Durham, North Carolina um, for my undergrad college years. And so um, let me give a little background as to why I want to encourage everyone to find a better way on reflecting on your experiences. I myself was reflecting on my own experiences recently. One of the residents in a hospital had a Wake Forest sweatshirt and then another one of the attendings had a Duke lanyard. And it just made me think about how like, I don't have any Duke gear to represent my alma mater. And I was like, I need to represent more. Why aren't I representing more? It was just like kind of a passing thought. And I reflected on how in medical school, I had a friend who also went to Duke. We didn't, we didn't know each other while we were there and we were a year apart in graduating classes. But in medical school, we were friends and he always kept me honest, like watching the games. And there was another, student who went to UNC and we would watch the UNC Duke games together. And so that was a really good camaraderie experience. I would interview some of the high school students who lived in the West Texas region who were interested in going to Duke. So I feel like I was a little bit more integrated at that time, but just ever since I graduated in 2012, I just noticed myself becoming more and more detached. And especially here in residency, I don't know that I really mentioned it a whole lot until like recently when I'm prompted. And so it just made me think about why am I disassociating <laughs> from my alma mater um, and I you know it's probably nothing it's probably just a passing thing that happens but some people really like rep their schools hard and it just made me reflect on if there was something underneath that because why not analyze things it's fun and so what I thought about is how I often associate my undergrad experiences with my pre-med experiences and um, as many physicians out there know the pre-med experience can be very challenging. I remember um, I made the first D on a test ever in my entire life um, <laughs> at Duke <laughs> with an organic chemistry test. Like I had never seen that letter on a test as a grade ever. <laughs> and I was like 20 years old. I was like, what's, what is happening? And so I just feel like, um, you know, you kind of try to suppress those memories. Um, and that made me think about my other classes that I took at Duke. I'm a psych major and a lot of the classes I took within that department um, had a lot to do with race identity and also academic achievement. Um, and so then that made me think about when I first learned about stereotype threat. And I have my handy dandy um, computer here to reference these papers and articles that I want to make sure I don't miss up on the details about. So for those who don't know, stereotype threat is a phenomenon coined by by, um, Claude Steele and Joshua Aronson in 1995, in which they did an experiment where um, African American test takers were told that this test that they were taking was a test of intelligence. And when they were told that, um, they did worse on the test in comparison to the white counterparts. When they were not told that it was a test of intelligence, they um, uh, performed equally. And there have been other iterations of that same experiment with other marginalized groups and other contexts, um, with other different stereotypes, but that's just one that um, I really wanted to highlight because I feel like that's what happened to me. <laughs> Fast forwarding to where I am now in residency, I was just interested in how that still might have some sort of underlying repercussions, um, even if it's subconscious. And so I found this article, it was like a reflection paper, and let me find the correct title. It was called Stereotype Threat, Racial Microaggression Undermines Performance of Black Health Professionals. And this was something that was released earlier this year. I will, um, I'll link to the article links, but if you don't have access to something like PubMed through an academic institution, you may not be able to see it. If you're really, really curious, just just ask me and I'll email it to you because <laughs> I downloaded the PDFs. But anyway, this article commentary was just noting how amongst African-American medical students, the risk of stereotype threat is quite high, which I can agree with. So I just wanted to point out some of the pointers from the article. Um, it highlighted that some of the sentiments from the focus groups that they conducted with these African-American students endorsed certain concerns for 
concepts such as tokenism, being the only person of that minority race being represented at certain events and recruitment events where they're trying to recruit a diverse group of applicants. There was also endorsement of a feeling of not feeling that the administration truly understood the importance of not only diversity, but also inclusion. And finally, there was commentary about fears of confirming a pejorative stereotype of their race and how that fear can actually lead to underperformance. And so that last one was something I could really relate to when it comes to the standardized testing, just because it's like I knew all the facts and figures. And even if it's like a perceived perception of someone that might of what someone might have of you um, your perception is your reality so all of that kind of works subconsciously or maybe even consciously and it can lead to certain test effects and so reflecting on my own medical school experience i feel like i subconsciously dissociated from Duke because Duke is known as a fairly academic rigorous institution and a lot of people would say like oh you went to Duke you must be smart and then I would see on my tests that I wasn't acing them. So I was like, well, am I smart? <laughs> you know, it really, it really messes with your mind, guys. <laughs> you work so hard, you study so hard, and you don't see necessarily what you expect on these um, objective tests. And so it kind of starts making you question, maybe I'm not really smart. And that leads me to the next point I wanted to highlight today is imposter syndrome. Um, so for those who don't know, imposter syndrome is something that comes up a lot in medical school. It's basically when you feel that despite your accolades, despite your achievements and like higher degrees achieved, eventually someone will notice that you are actually incompetent and they'll find you out as a fraud, an imposter. Um, that's how that concept is described. And I found another interesting article that really delved into how that imposter syndrome can lead to resident burnout. And so that paper, let me find a title, was um, a small group discussion session on imposter syndrome. And I can also, like I said, link to this article and send it to you if you're interested. But basically in this study, they um, had a focus group of residents where they discussed how to recognize imposter syndrome and also how to overcome it. And that was my favorite aspect of the article that I enjoyed is focusing on the items that help you to overcome imposter syndrome. And that included self-compassion, focusing on your strengths and seeking out feedback from trusted mentors. Um, and so I talk about these things together, the stereotype threat and imposter syndrome, because I really feel like they're fairly uh, interrelated and the historical context for both of those studies had to do with marginalized groups such as African-Americans and women. Um, of which I fit into both, as I have often said on my blog. <laughs> and so I just feel like it's very interesting to recognize when these things come up in your own life. And um, it's not like necessarily like, oh, you know, once you know that, then you can overcome the negative effects of it because you know it. That's not how life works. I think it's, it's important to recognize it. And then when you recognize it, figure out what are the larger systemic things that contribute to those feelings. There's a lot of personal work that everyone can always do. When it comes to these standardized tests, there's a lot of different study strategies that people can find that works for them. For me, I ultimately found that audiovisual educational materials work better for me than reading like stacks and stacks of textbooks. But my larger scale uh, message that I wanted to get out there is to encourage all of us to think about what are some institutional ways that we can reduce these feelings of stereotype threat or imposter syndrome. With that one article with imposter syndrome, they felt like having dedicated wellness curriculum focus groups for residents was helpful to help reduce the feelings of imposter syndrome. How about having dedicated <laughs> didactic sessions focusing on discussing diversity and inclusion or the lack thereof? I think to allude to my previous video, having more representation in those leadership roles can be helpful with reducing these perceptions because then you feel that maybe your advisor or your mentor um, in whichever specialty, medical specialty you decide to apply to can actually identify with some of the unique struggles you have. For example, I feel that for some people, they may not have this like knee-jerk reaction of being offended if someone, such as a patient, calls them Miss Aldridge instead of Dr. Aldridge, which happens to me. 
not a lot, but enough. <laughs> and so for some people, they probably think, you know, it's a harmless mistake. Um, a lot of times people say it's because I look so young, um, which is fine. And I understand that. But if I were mentoring a young student and they told me about that experience and they, you know, a young student who happened to be African-American and emerged into becoming a physician, I would understand why that kind of hits a little deeper because there's just a historical context behind it. There was a time not too long ago that African-American women were not allowed to matriculate into a public medical school institution. So there's just this underlying vibe in our culture that maybe the mistake isn't because I look so young, but maybe it's because you don't think I belong here. And you can agree or disagree with that sentiment, but you know, perception can be reality. So it's important just to have people who understand those perceptions, who aren't trying to um, debunk those perceptions and just to have a lot of different perspectives so that it can help someone out there find someone who can relate to them and help them along this arduous journey. So I know that was kind of, um, an interesting way to get from point A to point B. It started with me talking about going to Duke for undergrad and ended up talking about imposter syndrome and stereotype and how to overcome it. But I just really think that these things are related and I felt that I wanted to at least begin a conversation. Um, my whole point with my vlog is to try to spark thoughts about different things, um, ignite conversation and you know I welcome different insights and I would love to talk and interview people about their perspectives on what their experiences were like because mine are unique to the lens from which I see the world so it's all about finding a better way and working together to do so I hope you've gleaned something interesting from this post and like I said I'll link up those articles and maybe that'll lead to something even more interesting to you um, but for now that's all I have on finding a better way